everyone, I'm Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company, and I'm getting to play with a newer product today. This is our Lily Petals, and they are a check glass bead that has the hole going through the base of the petal. We sell them in nine gram tubes, so you're gonna have a bunch to make um, this beautiful pin or pendant. Um, I do have this one, this Sun Glow pin, as a pin backing, and I'll show you how to do that or I'll also show you how to make it into a pendant in case you don't wanna actually do it as a pin. It's that time of year when it's cold and I'm thinking that this would look nice on my coat, so I put it on a pin backing, which you can also use as a necklace too if you put your uh, wire or your chain right through the back of the pendant. You can make it so you can take it off or on the pendant. And a little use, extra use for some pin backs. This lily petal I'm going to be using is going to be highlighted by some round duo beads. If you need any of the materials for this sun glow pendant, you can check out the left hand side here. We'll put a little link to all the different materials that are used in the pendant. So that way if you do wanna make along, you can get your supplies at potomacbeads.com or check out your local Potomac Bead Company store and get your supplies there as well. For the lily petals, the color that I did in the example is the Halo Celestian Blue color. I'm going to be using and just kind of doing a nice soft version of this. I'm using the Halo um, Champagne color. You will need 16 of your lily petals in order to do this pendant. Underneath and around those lily petals are the round duo beads. In the example, I use the Crystal Graphite Rainbow color. You can see it kind of has some of that rainbow coating on either side. I'm gonna be using that pastel cream color and um, it gives that kind of nice, just warm glow to it. In addition to that, you're using 11 OC beads. I was gonna do it also with 15s, but I thought the simpler materials, the better for you guys. So these 11 O's are the galvanized apricot color. In the example, I used the jet bronze color and this is the um, black bronze, which is a Mayuki coating on the, or check coating on the Mayuki bead. Again, I'm gonna be using the galvanized apricot to go along with my colors. In the middle of the sun glow pendant is a Swarovski crystal, and it's a Rivoli in 10.7 millimeter. The one here I have is an aqua colored Rivoli in the middle there. And then the one that I'm gonna be using here is the crystal AB 10.7 millimeter. They do come in a pack of two, and um, you do get them in a bag of two, so you'll have enough to make two. So it's nice if you do wanna kind of switch up colors, you can do that as well with the different colored Rivolis. You'll see just a tiny bit of the Rivoli peeking out, but it's a 10.7 millimeter Rivoli, so it's pretty small to begin with. To get started, in addition to your beads, you'll need some wildfire or fire line beading thread. I'm using 0 .006 10 pound test, and you're gonna use a fair amount of this. This little pendant uses a lot more than you realize. I'm gonna start off with five feet, and if I need to, I'll build on from there. I also have my wildfire cord cutter or a thread burner will work, thread zap, either one works. And I'm working on my bead mat. I have some super new glue handy so that way I can glue down my ends. And if you do choose to do a pin backing, you will want to have some E6000. We sell them in these nice little tubes, just a dollar and a half, and um, the nice thing is that it doesn't dry out because it's a small tube. So you'll need a pin backing, which we also have in that E6000 if you do wanna do it as a little brooch or a pin. To get started, we are going to be using a size 12 beading needle, so it's a tiny one. You can use a 10 to if you want, but some of these areas at the very end get really tiny, so you may wanna to switch to a 12. So to start, get out five feet of thread, burn that off, squish down the end, and get ready to thread with your size 12 needle. You will be using everything kind of as we go and as we start, so you will wanna get everything ready and laid out in little piles to work with. I'm not gonna to worry too much right away about my crystal because we'll be adding that towards the very end of the project. Starting out very simply, I put a stop bead on the base of my thread after I had it on my size 12 needle. I'm leaving about an inch and a half to two inches of thread after my stop bead in order to tie off the thread at the very back of the project once the project is finished. 
I have that stop bead created with a bead that's not part of my project, so I make sure I don't sew through that bead accidentally. To make a stop bead, I took the thread and the needle, put it through that bead, and then went back through the bead two times, sewing away from that little tail. That's gonna hold the stop bead in place, but give us enough, enough flexibility that we can take it off at the very end. To get started, we are doing a really simple circle. I probably shouldn't have glued on the pin back, but I wanted to wear it um, until afterwards. But we're gonna start out with a simple circle just with our round duo beads and our 11 OC beads. We're gonna string all eight round duos separated by an 11 seed bead. The round duos have two holes to them, and right now we're just picking up one of the holes. It doesn't matter which hole you are picking up, unless you have a coated product that's only gonna be half coated. If you want all the shine to one side, like say this um, bead here that I use, the graphite, you'll wanna make sure that all of the bead holes that you're going to point that finish and that coating to one side. Once you have all of your round duos on, you'll wanna finish with an 11 L. Now I get to create my circle. To create my circle, I'm going to string back through that same hole through the first round duo, the first 11, and the second round duo. I'm doing this in a circular form, bringing my needle away from the tail. Once I have that, I have my little setting for my beads to all sit in and for my flower petals to sit on. When you look at the lily petals, they have a curvature that you can either do them facing down or facing up. That's up to you. You could also create them multiple ways. I faced all of my flowers facing up towards the front, down towards the back. I want all of those tips facing up, so I'm gonna keep that in mind as we get ready to add them. To add them, I'm gonna take my needle and thread coming out of the bottom hole of that last round duo that I sewed through, and I'm gonna to switch to the top hole going the opposite direction. That's gonna bring a little bit of thread there on the side that you're gonna see on the side of the bead, but it's not gonna show once you get the rest of your beads in. When I'm on the sides now, what I'm gonna to do to create the second hole gap and to connect these is simply put one of that lily petal through. I'm gonna pick up a petal so that I make sure that all of my petals are facing in the same direction. When I sew, I wanna make sure that the petals are all facing upward. So I'm going to pick up the petals as such. It's easiest if you keep your stop bead to the very back of the project you put on one of your petals and you sew through your round duo bead. Ideally, you don't get a little knot and you pull. Once you have the first one in place, you're gonna sew in and add your second one. Again, when you are adding them, you wanna make sure that the petals are facing the correct way. If it helps, you can even put it onto your needle facing the correct way that you need it to and then put it on. So through your next round duo bead and pull. You get to create the same effect the whole length of the project, adding these beads so that they're facing up. So this is gonna be our first of our eight petals. So we're gonna have 16 in all. This is our first eight. I'm gonna continue adding them the whole way around the single pendant until I get all eight in place. I have my last petal on my needle and I'm sewing through the last round duo bead and coming out right before my first petal that I added. Once I have that last petal in, I'm just gonna lay my project down, do a quick check and make sure that all of those petals are facing in the correct location. The next thing we're gonna do is add the petals that are at the top of the project. To add the top of the petals, we're going to be sewing through just the petals that we added. My needle is currently coming out of one of my round duo beads. I'm going to sew through the petal that's right next to it. You could also do this with multiple colors if you wanted another color showing. 
Once I do that, I am gonna give a nice little pull to make sure that my thread stays in line. In between the petals, I'm gonna add my 11 out and a petal, making sure that it's going the correct way, and an 11 out. I'm then gonna to skip to the next petal in my circle and sew through. Once you have that one on, go to the next, add your 11 and a petal and an 11. So through the next petal. So it's really simple steps to begin with. Continue on with the 11 petal 11. This is gonna add the other eight petals. So we're gonna be left with our 16 petals for that sun glow. Continue adding those petals in as you go around and connect to the previous row of your petals. I'm getting ready to add the last petal and I'm gonna sew through the first petal that my thread was coming out of from the previous row and that gets all of my petals on. You can see the petals want to take shape and kind of turn as you're working with it. That's what you want happening. So don't be afraid if they're kind of turning up and pulling on you. Again, that stop bead is to the back. And what I wanna do now is go through the round duo bead that's next to the petal that you're coming out of, go through the top hole, and then we're gonna turn it and go through the bottom hole. So a little thread is gonna be showing on the exterior of that bead. You could do the um, step that I'm doing now first before the exterior petals, but I think it's fun to see it take shape and to get those petals in early. What we're gonna do now is create a little bit of a bezel for our Swarovski Rivoli to sit in. And I'm going through the round duo, which is gonna push the thread on the side of that round duo, as well as the 11 -0. One thing you don't want is to get your thread caught around a petal though. We'll pull that out a little bit, push it around the petal, and then pull. Especially because I'm using that pastel cream color, you really won't see the thread, which is an added bonus to the color that I'm using. With this one here, I did use green thread because I was using those darker colors and that blue tone. To start the interior bezel, I'm going to use three seed beads between each seed bead on the inside portion. I'm going to pick up three 11s when I'm coming out of 11 and go to the next 11 and sew through. This is where I was saying it gets a little tight, so you probably want to use a size 12 needle. Those three beads will just sit at the top until we pull them in. Next, we have three more beads. So through the next 11. So we're just going to go the whole way around the center of the project here, adding three 11s between each 11 from the very first base row. This is also going to be the same step for the back of the pendant when we're working on it. The nice thing with this pendant for the color that I'm chosen, the back of the Swarovski crystal has a really pretty satiny golden silver finish. So this pendant will actually be reversible. One side will have a little bit more decoration while one side will have a little bit less decoration. If you are doing a pin backing, you won't see the back at all. So that's kind of up to you um, how you wanna do that back, but we'll show the technique. I'm going the whole way around, adding those three beads in and keeping that stop bead with my finger just down to the back for right now. Once I get my three beads on here, I'll have one more pass to go to, to add my last grouping of three. I have three more here. I did choose to do this all in one color. I did contemplate going and adding another color as well, but decided to keep it nice and simple. I'm gonna go back through that first 11 that I was coming out of from that base row. 
and at the same time I'm going to sew to the top of one of those three points. Once you're out of that top middle bead, what we're going to do is sew around, adding one more bead but catching the middle of those three beads that we just did the whole way around. So we're going to add a bead, where if you want to do a different color, this is a place to do it. You're going to add a bead and pick up the next bead underneath the next round duo in the line of three, picking up that middle third bead. Add another bead, pick up that middle third bead. That middle bead is going to sit usually at a pointed end anyway, and want to sit up, so that's how you're going to know which bead you want to add because it's already going to be up. As I go around, again, I'm just adding one bead and catching the middle of all of those. So you end up adding eight additional beads. Make sure your tail doesn't get in there. And I'm not worrying at all about my crystal right now because I will add that as I do the back. Again, going around and adding onto that point. I'm going to go the whole way around the project, adding that bead, connecting the points. I'm adding in my second to last bead here. And then once I add that last bead into place, that will complete my middle section for my Rivoli to sit inside. If you don't have a Rivoli, another idea is you could sew a 10 millimeter bead in place in the middle. Once you complete that loop and have that last bead in the last point, you are just going to do a little tug and pull that entire little beaded section of the flower in tightly. You can see I'll just drop that Rivoli in the back just to show you the look and the fit. So you have just that nice little glimmer that's hanging out right in the middle. And the Swarovski are always hard to show on camera. What we're going to do now before closing in the back is we're going to do our four exaggerated petals by adding some of the 11 O's and kind of curving around the round duo beads. To get to the top of the actual pendant, what I'm going to do is sew right along that little line of three that we created in the round duo. And this is just to hide my thread so that way you're not seeing it all as I sew back. I'm then going to sew back through an 11-0, that's right after that bead, back through one of my round duo beads. When I'm at the round duo beads, just like we did on the side, I'm going to go from the top bottom hole into the top hole of the round duo bead that I'm coming out of, as well as, if you can, through that first lily petal. When I'm coming out that lily petal, I'm going to grab on to my 11, my next lily petal, and I want to come out the 11 0 on the side. You want to make sure that you're coming out of one of the lily petals that's at the top. So the one that sits out on the further, furthest edge right on top of the one of the round duo. So not in between, on top. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to grab on to the two beads, the first and the third bead that we added on the bottom of the round duo beads. We did that group of three and we caught the, the middle bead, that second bead, the whole way around as we did our little bezel. Now we're going to grab the two beads, beads one and bead three, from that same three grouping. I'm going to add three of my 11 OC beads, take my size 12 needle, and grab my first bead, and then that third bead. If you need to, you can sew one at a time. And once you're through those two, Pull those three beads that you just added down closer to the round duo. Add three more beads. So back through the 11 on the opposite side of that same flower petal. 
I also sewed through the petal at that point, and I'm going to go through the 11 on the side of it and the whole way around them till I get to the third round duo in line. So I'm on the first here, there's the second and the third. I'm going to sew through three more petals before I get ready to add that design. If you want to, you can flip to the back as you're working and that'll make it easier to see which beads and which course you need to take your thread through in order to get in between some of those beads. If you need to, you can also kind of separate out the beads a little bit and push them to the side in order to be able to get through those. So I have it turned to the back and I'm just sewing right through those. I've gotten done adding my little four sections of my popping out beads here and going around the round duo bead. I didn't do all the sections, I only did every other bead because I didn't want it to be too many seed beads and to lose the pretty effect of the flower that's happening. If you want to and you wanted to do multicolors or you wanted to use some 15s as well, you could do every round duo and decorate around each. Once I'm done adding all these petals, it's going to give, or all of these beads, it gives it a bit of a three-dimensional look. When you turn it to the side, some of the petals, the ones that are caught in with the seed beads, sit more up and the other ones are more recessed. At this point, I'm ready to do my backing. My crystal fits inside pretty perfectly. I moved my stop bead out just a little tiny bit, and with my thread and needle, I've gone from the outside of that seed bead area through my petal and then snaked down in my project so I'm coming out the bottom hole of one of my round duo beads. At this point I'm going to drop my crystal in, the silver backing side up and my crystal side down and you can see it fits pretty nice and snug right in there. I can even turn it over and it's not going to drop out. If you are gluing on and doing a glue on bezel or bail at this point, whether or not you're doing a glue on bail or a pin, you actually don't necessarily have to even finish off the Rivoli and create a bezel area for it to sit in because you're going to be gluing it into place. I did, however, still bezel in around my pin backing because I wasn't sure what I was doing with it until I was done. So if you do want to glue, now's the time. You'll just get out your E6000, glue it up, and put glue right along the backing and right along your pin back and press it down and let it dry. And your pin will be completely done. If you want to make it a pendant like I'm going to show, we are going to skip along the round duos to hold in the actual crystal from falling out the back. It's not going to fall out, but if you do apply pressure, it can kind of sneak through there and it can pop out. So we want to hold it into place. Once you have your crystal set nicely in your bezel, your thread and needle again are coming out one of your round duo beads. What we're going to do is we're going to add four of our 11 O seed beads. And we're going to skip from one round duo to another round duo. If you look in the front, you're actually skipping to the beads that are raised with those 11 O seed beads. We're going to create a box going from each of our round duos right along the back and that's going to hold our Rivoli in place. With this tight space, when I skip one of the round duos that I'm going from and I skip around, it is a very tight space to get from one round duo to the other and to get your needle to bend in the appropriate manner. What you can do, need be, is just poke it through that round duo, let it come out in the front, and then push that needle back to the back, making sure you're not picking up any beads and sewing through any beads. That will then allow you to pull that crystal in nice and tight and decorate that back a little bit. Just make sure if you are going through to the front that you're not catching on any of the beads. So you're constantly flipping from the front to the back just to make sure. I'll add four more 11s on. 
sew through my next round duo bead. And again, it's that tight space, so you just kind of want to link on to one of those. And if you can't get to come out the back, go out the front, that's fine. Pull that nice and tight to hold that in. And then just take your needle from the front to the back, making sure again not to catch on any beads. Three more beads go on, or I'm sorry, four more beads go on. And we're gonna hold this crystal right in place. Again, through the round duo. And we'll have one more round duo after this. So from the front to the back, making sure you're not catching on any of the beads. And then four more. I'm gonna sew through the last round duo bead, which is the first one that my thread was coming out of. And then I'm gonna take my needle and thread and get ready to add my bail. Going from the front here, I'm bringing my thread to the back. You can add your bail in a number of different sections. It's kind of up to you how you want to add it. It's also really pretty from the back. Again, if you wanted to keep that pretty bezeled look, you really can make it an interchangeable look to a pendant. The front has a lot more going on. The back is a lot more open. So you can do it again however you want to. Face the petals up one way, back the other way, kind of up to you. To do your bail, generally speaking, um, just for my sense of kind of look and artistic interpretation, I feel that one of the petals that's at the top that pops up a little bit should be at the top and that's where the bail should be. So luckily I'm right here coming out of one of those beads. I'm going to go from the top hole or the bottom hole, I'm sorry, of the round duo into the top hole of the round duo and out the other side. This can be a little bit tricky because it wants to go through one of those petals right away. But you're going to force it off to the side. Once you're to the back here, coming out the top of your round duo bead, here's where you're going to create and make your bail. I'm going to add the appropriate amount of beads for whatever kind of chain or pendant I'm putting it on. If I wanted to put it on my herringbone rope from the Sonoran sundial, I could do that. If I wanna just put it on to a regular chain, you can do that as well. You're just gonna frame out one of those beads right along the back. Or if you want it to sit further down on the necklace, you can actually go from the top hole to the bottom hole, creating that loop. I have that simple loop that I'm gonna create. I have on there right about 10 beads. I'm gonna add two more to create my loop and sew back through that same hole of the round duo bead creating my loop. That loop's just going to hang out right there along the top, pushing it back behind my beads, and it just frames out that last little bead. That then, when you put it on, will turn to the side. That leaf will pop up, and you'll have it right along the edge. What you do want to do is reinforce that area so if I am adding a necklace onto it or a chain onto it, that's where the tension is going to be. And it is a heavier pendant, so you do want to make sure to reinforce it. I have a chain here, and I'm just going to slide on and show you what the look is. And it's just going to lay right on that chain as a nice, pretty pendant. Again, you can reverse it, that it has that pretty look as well. And it doesn't necessarily need to be one way or the other. It's up to you. You can wear it one way one day and one way the other day. The only thing that I still need to do is to cut off and singe down this extra wire or the extra thread. If you want to, you can snake back with your thread so you can tie your thread ends together, going from the top hole of the round duo to the bottom hole and then skipping across the whole way till you get to the thread showing. If it's a lot of space and you don't want to go that distance, you can also tie off your thread with simple sewer's knots and catch on some of those bridge threads. Once it's all tied off, you're just going to use a little bit of super new glue and burn down your thread ends. I did back my thread around and then did a little tie right where my thread ends meet. 
And once you're finished, you have this pretty little flower pendant or brooch for whichever kind of festive occasion you want to. You can wear it on a simple chain. You could do a strand of beads that go along with it, whether or not you want to do it as something that comes off or stays on, that's up to you. But it really does have a number of different uses as far as its versatility. So if you need any of these materials to do this beautiful little um, sun glow pendant or pin, you can go back to the beginning of this video to our links where we link to the Potomac Bead Company site, potomacbeads.com, and you can purchase your materials there. As always, check out our locations page and visit a Potomac Bead Company near you to gather your supplies. And if you want to stay connected with us, you can stay connected with us via Facebook. You can also check out on the website and search for some of the different products and look at the different video links that are there to show you how to use the different products that are involved in this necklace as well as other projects. Thanks so much for watching everyone and have a really great time and have fun making.